Hi, it's Steve from Enso. Did you know that data workers lose an average of seven hours a week just repeating tasks as data changes? Well, today we're gonna to show you how Enso Analytics eliminates that wasted effort and gives you your time back. So let's jump into Enso and I'll give you a quick tour. Here in the Enso data catalog, this is where Enso users will find workflows that they've built or that others have shared with them, along with data files, Enso secrets, which are encrypted credentials, and Enso data links, which have all the information to get access to data living in a wide variety of sources, including Snowflake, SQL Server, S3, or even web APIs. I've already created a blank workflow called Enso Demo, and I can click on the tab to begin editing this workflow now. So here, I'm dragging an Excel file to the canvas to get started. And this file contains two sheets. And what I need to do today is tie information from these two sheets together to create a ranking of our account executives based on their 2024 sales performance. Now, opening these sheets is as easy as double clicking on their names. Our first step is to get a look at the data itself. So we get an idea of what we're gonna to need to do to get to the result that we're looking for. And this is the invoice sheet. And as you can see, it has some challenges. The EIN column contains the identifier that's meant to tie this data together with our CRM data, but the format's inconsistent and it's gonna to need to be standardized. And the date column came in as a text column, and we need to fix this in order to allow us to summarize the results by year. And the phone number column is a disaster, but we're gonna leave that for another day since it's not needed for this analysis. Now let's go look at the CRM data to see what we find. Let's see. The account owner and, next, and the next step date columns appear to be correct, but the EIN column has the same challenges as what we saw in the invoice data, so we need to standardize this as well. And I'm going to start with the invoice data since there's a bit more work to do to prepare this one. So first I'm going to add a text cleanse component. And I pick the column that I want to clean up, which is the EIN column, and I choose what I want to remove. And I'm choosing symbols, which will include the tildes and the hyphens. This looks perfect now. So in Enso, we're not changing any of the data in the original Excel file. All of the data manipulation is done in memory. And of course, we can write out to a file or a database at any point in the process if we choose to, but we're not going to do that today. Now I want to format this to add the hyphen after the second digit. And I'm going to use a set component to do this and add an expression to get this right. So Enso supports a wide variety of expressions that allow you to do very powerful calculations. Notice that every component always has all its configuration visible. This is really different from other products where the workflow is represented by icons, but the configuration is hidden. Enso's transparency makes it easy to spot mistakes and makes auditability effortless. You now see that the EIN column is formatted exactly how we want it. The built-in visualizations for the data are very helpful as we build, but we really only need to see the latest one. So I'm gonna tidy things up as I go. Next, I'm gonna fix the invoice date column. And we're gonna use a parse component to do this. A parse converts text to different data types, including date, numeric, and Boolean. In this case, we're converting invoice date from text to a date. And since it's in a non-standard format, I'm using a custom format string. So let's look at our result. You can see in the column header, this is now a date type, and we can see the dates now in an ISO standard format. So one more step now to create a year column, and we're gonna do this so that we can aggregate sales by year. So another set component goes here, but this time I'm using a simple expression. And this allows me to build the expression by pointing and clicking rather than typing in the expression from scratch. So let's see our result. Great, we now have a year column that's populated with a four digit year. All right, one final step here in this sheet. We need to look for duplicates to make sure that we're truly done. I add a duplicates component to the workflow. And by not choosing the specific list of columns, it's now gonna look across all the columns and look for duplicates. Since one of the columns has a data type of float, Enzo is warning us that floating point numbers may not always show up as equal but it's telling me that there's 40 duplicates here. So we need to do something about that so we don't end up double counting some deals. So I'm adding a distinct component here, which will just give me back the unique records. Now we have 2000 records rather than the 
2020 records that we had prior to the distinct component. And I'm now happy that the invoice data is ready. So jumping over to the CRM data, all that we need to do is standardize the EIN column. And I can select the two components that did this from the invoice data, hit Control C to copy, and then Control V to paste them, making a duplicate. Now you can see that they're still connected to the invoice data, but I can fix this by dragging a new connection from the CRM data. And just like that, our data is cleaned up. Now to tie these two data sets together, I'm going to use a join component. And I'm going to pick an inner join, and I'm going to link these on the EIN column. Okay, so look at that. We now have one unified data set that has all the information from the invoice sheet, and we've added the two columns from the CRM sheet. That was pretty painless. Now for the fun part. I'll add a crosstab component and group by the account owner and set the names to the year column, which creates a new column for each year, and I'll sum by the invoice amount. And there it is, a summary of sales by year by account executive. Let's add a sort component to sort the data by sales in 2024. I'll choose the 2024 column and I'll set this to a descending order. And finally, let's add a format component to beautify the output. Here I'm picking one of the default format options that adds commas and two decimal places. All right, that looks perfect. We've now created a workflow that ranks our account executives by sales in 2024. Now for the best part. I'm going to fast forward to next month and simply change the input file. Watch this analysis rerun. It used the exact same steps, saving me time and reducing the risk of making a mistake or skipping a step, giving me the wrong answer. Amazing, right? Take hours back every week by trying Enso Analytics. Download our free community edition today at ensoanalytics.com. Thank you very much.